A leader is someone who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. John C. Maxwell. Good afternoon. I'm Specialist Ruskaeda. In today's the topic of discussion, we will be talking about leader development. I want to give a special thank you to my SGL, Staff Sergeant Lifford, for attending this presentation. In today's discussion, we will be covering all aspects of leader development. I will then give a brief overview of what we have spoken of. Finally, I will open the floor for any questions. Outcomes of leader development. Why might a leader want to develop their skills? Well, leader development promotes a leader of character, presence, and intellect. A leader of intellect is able to make rational decision making and suggest new ideas that push the organization forward. A leader of presence is able to present themselves amongst a plethora of others effectively. A leader of character is able to have their mind speak for them and has an understanding of morality. This is all a reflection of the army values. The army values being loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. The source of this information. The source of this information can be eradicated from Army Doctrine Publication 6-22. AADP 6-22 encompasses leader development. Category one, self-preparation. This category encourages self-improvement and brings awareness, one's virtues, and shortcomings. This is a very important aspect to be aware of, as a good leader can capitalize on what they're good at and make improvements on their weak points. School and education is extremely important as it builds a character's knowledge and understanding of different topics that may arise and cause an issue later on. A leader should take into consideration different schools and ways of broadening their information. For example, a leader can take a Spanish course or a language course and understand another language to avoid a barrier that may be brought up and it provides many benefits. For example, I know Spanish and English proficiently it allows me to translate for others, avoiding that barrier that many experience. Another school a leader may take is a school that might benefit them in an upcoming change. If a leader knows that they're deploying into a high risk area and they're gonna be a door gunner and outside of the safe area of the base or fortification, they might want to consider taking SEER as it helps them prepare for a hostage environment. Category two, creation of a positive environment. It is crucial for a leader to build trust within their team. This creates camaraderie and a spirit to core, which is fellowship and common loyalty. This helps ensure the organization's goals are being completed smoothly. It is important for a leader to be willing to hear new suggestions and be willing to understand any considerations. Develop others to assure greater responsibility. An effective leader will place their subordinates in a leadership position. This ensures that the subordinate has experience to be able to properly and effectively lead before they are placed in a leadership role. This is crucial 
so that our leader is able to understand the leadership position thoroughly before being placed without any knowledge. A leader is able to capitalize on this coaching, their subordinates and refining their own leader skills. Additionally, this allows to, so, allows to showcase the subordinates understanding and is able to demonstrate leadership skills. Furthermore, this is a good way to begin leadership development. Category four, stewards of the profession. Category four speaks about stewards of the profession. In this category, a leader improves the organization by making long lasting impacts and changes. This in turn motivates others to do the same, creating a good professional environment. Stewards of the profession instill self-discipline into others, encouraging subordinates to go to school and learn about new army topics. Category four can begin leader development and subordinate as a leader is able to instill that same self-development that they had that we learned in category one. Subordinates will learn new topics to further their understanding on different topics, making it easier for them to come into a leader position. Conclusion, a leader is supposed to mentor their subordinates and teach them, being able to give them an understanding of their own role and position as a leader. A good leader must create a positive environment. This helps the trust between leader and subordinate. This in return will allow subordinates to bring new suggestions to the leader. Additionally, introducing personal change into oneself. Self-development is crucial for a leader. Without any knowledge, you cannot go into leader position without understanding unexpected situations that may occur. Finally, a leader must stay committed and continually improve themselves, their subordinates and the organization causing positive change. Questions. How does a leader development, how does leader development affect a soldier's growth? Leader development affects a soldier's growth as it helps them be able to understand new topics and be able to develop themselves and others. This is extremely important for the Army's goals and the, and the organization's motives. We've discussed the developmental aspects of leadership. However, what traits does an effective leader demonstrate? An effective leader demonstrates care for their subordinates and being able to understand for them and be able to accept potential suggestions, being unbiased. Leader development also may come in the form of improving the unit and improving themselves. You can tell when someone has made self-improvements that they are taking these leader development aspects into, considered, into consideration. Thank you for attending my brief.